again guys, welcome back. And as you can see from that opening footage, I've arrived at this beautiful little seaside place called Eagle Hawk Neck. And it's got some rugged coastline and some beautiful areas of uh, exploration and things that I really want to have a look at. But the, one of the things that I really want to check out is a place called the Tessellated Pavement. And it's quite a popular tourist attraction here in this part of Tasmania. Uh, but I've never been here myself. So I've just been down to explore around. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful geologically shaped, it looks like pavers laid out uh, along the shoreline. And the water comes up, creates beautiful reflections. And so photographers come for miles around to shoot this location typically at sunrise and sunset. I've just taken a few shots down there. Um, you know, a little bit of color in the sky, but not too much. I think it's probably a better sunrise location, but needless to say, I'm going back there tonight to shoot nightscapes. Yeah, so while I was down there exploring around, taking a few photos and just checking out the lay of the land, I met two, two chaps that come up to me and said, g'day Richard, how are you going? Um, and this just out of the blue, this actually happens to me fairly frequently, but it's quite interesting that people all around the place seem to recognize me from a distance. But anyway, um, so two great, great guys called uh, Keith and Peter, and they're going to join me down there tonight because they were going to shoot there anyway. And uh, so I'll catch up with them a little bit later when we go down to shoot the Milky Way rising above the pavement. Now, um, I'm not quite sure what the tide's going to do. Um, as I said before, I'm not, uh, I'm not familiar with tides and how they work. I know it's going to be high tide later on tonight, but I don't think it gets too high. I think it'll just come up a bit from where it was when I was down there. But anyway, I'm going to get something to eat. And uh, first things first, it's about 5.30, so it's almost dark now outside. So I haven't got very long to wait. So by the time I have something to eat, get back down there, meet the guys. I think it'll be on. So looking forward to it. Okay, so I've arrived down at the pavement. The very first thing I'm going to do is change my footwear because I don't want to be wearing these shoes down there. I know what's going to happen. Some rogue wave is going to come in and I'm going to get my boots full of water if I'm not watching out what I'm doing. So let's get these boots on. That's good. And we'll get going. Okay, so I've made my way down to the pavement. The sky's looking absolutely fantastic at the moment. Um, and the water hasn't come in too far, so it's all looking very, very good. So, I'm gonna take a few shots now, have a look around. There's still plenty of time for that core to rise up a lot higher than what it is currently. So, that's what I'm gonna wait for, but in the meantime, I'll take some shots and just get myself started and work out the best compositions. So at first here, I'm shooting panorama. Now, there's about a 20% crescent moon setting over there in the west, but what that's done is it's lighting up the sky and making it a lot more bluer than it has been the last week or so that I've been here in Tasmania. So consequently, I've increased the white balance a lot uh, about 5,500 Kelvin, and that's helping. Uh, look, a lot of people are gonna say to me, well, why don't you just set the white balance to auto and, and fix it up later? Well, my answer to that is, I don't think it's a good habit to get into is to just use auto stuff 
when you're shooting nightscapes. I think it's much better to have a logical uh, reason for doing the things that we do. So in this case, that's what I'm doing. The other thing I did was I've got a Z96 video light over there with an orange gel on the front, just on a really low level. So this is classic low level lighting. And what I've done, I've um, just put it over there. I don't have any light stands here, so it's up on a rock just shining very, very gently kissing some of these rocks here. And that's giving the, the foreground rocks here just a little bit of an orange glow. And I, and I like the effect that that's giving me. How's it going? That's the way. Wow. Looks good. How do you find the focusing on the R5? Uh, it's so much better than that. I've got an R as well. Yeah. The R5, I mean, I had a 5 DSR before. Yeah, yeah. It's so sharp, but it had an angle to the move. Yeah, yeah. But it was a brilliant 50 megapixel, and I loved it, but I couldn't yeah. use it. Yeah, no, I totally understand. The, the, the flip screen is so oh. is so good, isn't it? Whoa, here we go. Now, I think it goes without saying that composition is the most important topic for photography. Now I know it's all about light and everything else, but for me, composition. And so um, we've spent a fair bit of time here just working out some of the angles on these rocks. And there's so many options, but you have to decide on one and then stick to that and then work out the technical details of how to actually shoot that. Uh, this particular location here, what I did was shoot a stack of 10 shots for the sky. I shot that wide open at f1.8 because I wanted to get as much brightness as I could in the um, medium distance foreground. And um, so I shot 10 of those, stacked those f1.8, 10 second shutter speeds at ISO 6400, then stopped down to f2.8, uh, refocused on this immediate foreground, these rocks close to the camera and changed my aperture to ISO 2500 and shot three three minute exposures with no ambient light. So in other words, no light painting, nothing like that, just ambient starlight. And I'm gonna focus stack those and blend them together and hopefully that one will come out okay. And I couldn't resist myself. I threw myself in for a selfie. It's basically just a silhouette. So, hey, I'm only gonna be here once. So. I mightn't get back here for years, you just don't know, do you? But anyway, so we're gonna have a look around, see if we can find some more compositions. Uh, the, the sky's really clear, so it's been fantastic. Milky Way's there, shining really, really well. It's a bit windy, get, getting a bit chilly, but not too bad overall.
Wow, this place is absolutely incredible. It is so engaging. I mean, I keep looking back at those waves because I think they're inching closer and closer as the time progresses through the night. Oh, the Milky Way looks magnificent. The stars are out. There's hardly any clouds in the sky now. So I'm really pleased with the images I've captured. Once again, I've mostly captured panoramas here. And I think I wanted to try to, to do justice to this location because it is just so iconic and so beautiful. And so I wanted to get as wide an expanse as I could. Now, I've only used the 20 millimeter f1.8 S lens on the Nikon Z6. Um, and quite often I've actually shot it wide open at f1.8. The, the light gathering ability and the ability to capture the shadow detail here is fantastic with that lens. Now, there's been a few times where I've stopped it back down to f2.8, uh, but it is very dark down here. I haven't done any light painting as such because I, I just wanted to try and capture the ambience and, and get that natural reflection that you get from the water running over the rocks here. And I think that is, that is the essence of the tessellated pavement. Uh, and so what I think I will do, because it, 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 this place is so beautiful, I need to show you in the daytime. So we're going to come back here tomorrow and I'll show you what it looks like down here in decent light. So hang in there, we'll be back soon. Good morning everybody and here we are back at the scene of the action from last night. I'm just going to take you down there and walk you through some of the things that we got up to, compositions and just show you the ambience of the place. Let's get going. So the first thing I'm noticing this morning here is just how much lower the water level is. So when I was here last night, of course, the tide was coming in. It wasn't excessively high, but as you can see now, um, the water's way out the other side of where the pavement basically ends. And have a look at it. There's these gorgeous squares everywhere, literally like a pavement. It is just absolutely gorgeous down here. And it, at the moment, the morning light is just kissing the rocks and it just looks wonderful. So this is one of the compositional places that I chose last night. I really like the multi-levels of these rocks here. So the water was much closer down this way, but I wanted to get some of this rock face into the frame and so by putting the tripod just up there on top of the rocks facing down there and of course all through all of this the Milky Way core is rising up in that sky over in the east. All of my compositions last night were facing in that direction but uh, I was looking to get some detail into these rocks in the foreground. So one of the things I've been doing quite a bit on this trip is shooting long exposure foregrounds. So when I talk about long exposure, I'm talking about maybe one minute or two minute or even three minute exposures to capture some detail in the foreground because let's face it, uh, it's completely dark. Uh, there's, there's nothing to light the foreground. And that's what I did here last night. I set my camera to shoot uh, a number of images of the sky at, actually I think it was wide open at f1.8, 15 second shutter speed at ISO 6400. But then, without moving the camera position, I focused on this foreground section here, and I stopped there my aperture to f2.8. ISO to a, a, a still a high-ish, but ISO 2500, but I shot three minute exposures. And the reason for that, I just wanted to get a lot of this foreground detail, and then just blending those in in post-production to create the final image. Now, I did touch on this last night, when I was here out in the field. But in my opinion, composition is the most important factor when it comes to photography. And in this instance, I was looking to shoot a panorama 
in this very location. So I set my tripod right here and I decided to shoot three rows in uh, portrait orientation. And of course, I shot those wide open at f1.8. Again, the reason for that is because I want to capture some foreground detail. And so I shot at f1.8, 15 second shutter speeds at ISO 6400. You've already seen the images, but the, the reason I did that was to capture this, this foreground. The sky is very bright at those settings, but the foreground, I, I want a sort of a halfway balancing act between the foreground and the sky. And that's how I worked in this particular occasion. Sometimes when I'm shooting panos, I will actually shoot a different settings for the foreground and blend two separate uh, panos together. I didn't choose to do that here. And the main reason I didn't choose to do that, you probably can't tell now in the daytime, but last night, the water was coming in this channel here and it was quite precarious. And the, of course the tide was coming in and I didn't want to waste all my time doing long exposure foregrounds when it's potentially I'd have the camera being inundated with water. So I decided to do the quickest option I could. And so I hope you've been able to get a bit of a picture of the grandeur of this place. It is simply amazing. And I'm so pleased that I made the effort and the time to come here last night to shoot. I'm also very grateful that we had gorgeous night skies, clear as a bell. And, and that's something that I can't take for granted down here in Tasmania. And so my time here at the absolutely amazing tessellated pavement comes to a close. I hope you've enjoyed the images that I've captured here at this place. Now, if you're ever in Tasmania or the southern part of Australia, you have to come here. It is an amazing location. And in fact, every location in Tasmania, I keep saying this, but every location down here is just so marvelous and so beautiful. And so, you know, if you find yourself in Australia, it's a beautiful country and this is right at the top of the tree. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me once again here at this uh, video. Look, I appreciate the fact that you have. Give us a thumbs up and a like if you, if you like the video. Um, also, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I'd love to have you on board. I always appreciate that. Chat in the comments down below, all really good. All right, well, have a fantastic week, guys. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.